Hi. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to a very special program. I'm Aurea Duba, and over the next half an hour, I'm very excited to say, we will reveal the winner of one of the most coveted prizes in sports, the 2015 BBC African Footballer of the Year. We've got five very deserving nominees up for the award, but just like at the Oscars, or the Grammys, there can only be one winner. And it is you, the public, who voted in your hundreds of thousands to choose this year's BBC African Footballer of the Year. For that, thank you very much indeed. Without your vote, of course, we would have no winner. And so, on to the awards. And with me in the studio to discuss the prize, our nominees, and another successful year in African football is a former Cameroon international who won Olympic gold in 2000 and also played in the 2002 FIFA World Cup, Patrick Sufo. And alongside him, our expert on all things African football, John Bennett. A very warm welcome to you both. Hello, all right. It's great to have you here. And, and Patrick, wonderful way to end what's been a fantastic year on the continent. Just tell us in your personal experience, because all of our five nominees are world leaders in, in the game. So what does it mean to play at the top of your game for your country? I mean, playing for your country is always, uh, I'm personally, something I've, I've been dreaming of since I was a little boy. Uh, wearing those colours is was more than uh, than anything else for anybody coming from Cameroon personal I mean for the place I know the most yeah and this is uh, I mean you feel like it's a privilege playing for your country even uh, so it's a feeling that you cannot experience anywhere else yeah. is something so big Cameroon the team means so much for the country that is the ultimate goal for any footballer well, we should country. have to talk about your country because you have very very handily brought in that piece <laughs> of silverware or gold wear, if I can call it that, <laughs> that you won in 2000. So if you don't mind picking out that wonderful medal that you've got down there, um, between me and John, uh, there's no chance that we'd have any chance of picking up that. one of those. Fantastic. Uh, but, but John, um, we have, with these five nominees, mm. global stars, not just African stars. It's a great lineup, up R.A. When you think about it, three previous winners. We've got an African football legend already. We've got a player who's at the top of the scoring charts in European football, who's being coveted by clubs like Barcelona and Real Madrid. We've got two players scoring consistently in the Premier League. And you think about the players who missed out as well, Ore. The likes of Riyad Mahrez, who's one mm -hmm. of the best players in the Premier League. The likes of Odion Igalo, Sofian Fagouli. I think it's a fantastic uh, lineup this year. And you've spoken to them. You yeah. know just how much it means to them. It means a lot. I have to say, picking out Andre Ayew, when I talked to him, his face lit up when he talked about winning the award back in 2010. Yaya Toure, I went to his house, and the award had pride of place uh, when he won it a couple of years ago. Pride of place on the mantelpiece next to the Premier League winners' medals. So this means a lot to them. They all, they all are desperate to win this. Yeah, yeah. John, you've teased us a little <laughs> bit there. I'll let you hold I'm on to medal. Patrick's medal. So, <laughs> generally speaking, John Bennett's having a great day. Uh, in a moment, we're going to be crossing to Focus on Africa's Peter Okoche, who is on location where this year's winner is. But, just to keep the suspense going a little bit longer, let's first remind you of who exactly are the nominees for the 2015 BBC African Footballer of the Year. So those are our five, and it is, of course, an accolade in itself to be nominated. However, we will soon be getting down to business and cutting those nominees from five down to two as we build up to the big announcement. But first, let's cross over to Peter Quatche, who is at a secret footballing location close to where this year's winner is, and we're not giving anything away, are we yet, Peter? Absolutely not, Aurea. This is probably my favourite part of this award, where I know and you don't. <laughs> what I can tell you is that, you know, I've traveled long and hard to get to this uh, location where we're at uh, here today. Um, the, the winner, very, very happy to be a winner. Like I said, I know who he is. You don't. We're not going to spill the beans just yet. There's still a bit more time to go. But I heard uh, you talking in the studio just a, a few moments ago and talking about how well um, the five nominees have all performed 
this year. And they've all been really uh, at the top of, of their game, all deserving uh, nominees. They all deserve to win, we should say. But, I mean, only one person can win this award each year. You'll have to wait to find out who it is in 2015. We can't wait. Patrick, you look like you're having a great time leaving us here in suspense. Um, well, I've got to say, it is fantastic to be bringing you the climax to the BBC African Footballer of the Year. And, well, we kicked off the competition for 2015, bigger and bolder than ever before. We were hosted by the Kaiser Chiefs Football Club in Johannesburg, and the waves of excitement rippled right across the BBC, from our world news television and world service radio output to live text commentary on the BBC Sport website and our social media channels, of course. Everyone's got in on the act. So here's a reminder of how the day went. Welcome to this year's BBC African Footballer of the Year. It is such an honour to be part of the show, and in particular because uh, we are doing it, we're announcing the finalists in Africa. And this is what it's all about. The winner of this year's BBC African Footballer of the Year. It really was a fantastic day, but without further ado, it is time for five to become two as we cut three of our nominees from the shortlist. And as we've mentioned already, they've contributed so much for club and country in 2015. So we're going to use this as an opportunity to celebrate the achievements of the unlucky trio. So, out of the running, go. Ghana and Swansea City's Andre Ayew. Last year's winner, Yassine Brahimi. And... Senegal's Sadio Mane. So commiserations to them. That means that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Yaya Toure are our final two. And so we'll be going head-to-head -head for the award. We'll speak about them and their exploits in the year a little bit later on when Peter, the man in the know, the man who's enjoying it out there, reveals who the last man standing is. But what about those three guys then? Um, and Patrick, I've got to ask you, who do you reckon was the closest to making the top two? I mean, personally, they're all uh, winners in my eyes. Uh, they represented the continent at a very high level last season. Um, I'm hoping they're going to keep doing so. Uh, so we have those difficulties choosing the last two or even the winner next year. So they're all winners in my eyes. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. well, they absolutely are. I mean, a, a, a large crop to pick uh, from yeah. and just to get out of those five. But, I mean, wh wh what would you say about those three who've just missed out? I, I pick out Andre Ayew, who was so unlucky to lose the final of the Africa Cup of Nations. I wonder if that would have made the difference. I wonder if that would have got him into the final too. Remember, it's a penalty shootout. Mm. Missed out on winning the Cup of Nations with a penalty shootout. Emotional he playing time. So well, emotional, he was in tears. He's played so well in the Premier League. So I wonder if he's the unlucky one out of those three. But I think they'll be nominated next year. I could see them being back next year. What about Sadio Mane, Patrick? Because yeah, he's a guy who has attracted a lot of attention around Europe because of his play for Southampton this yeah, year. Obviously, he's been, he come to England in a league where uh, it's not easy to adapt. And he did very well since he came in. Uh, and I'm looking forward with more confidence. The more he goes into the league, we have more confidence. I'm looking forward to see what he's going to come up with this year. But... Uh, Yes, uh, he's a player with a, a lot of future ahead of him, and um, I'm sure he will be a regular in those lists in the yeah. future. Yeah. Our 2014 champion has been dethroned, uh, and <laughs> it was always going to be hard for Yassine Brahimi to replicate the, what uh, an amazing last 12 months 2014 was. Yeah, last year he had the World Cup. He was one of the stars for Algeria, who had a fantastic tournament in Brazil. This year, he's been consistent for FC Porto. He's had some good moments. They had a good run in the Champions League last season, but he hasn't been spectacular. But again, you know, he's already won it once. I, I could see him winning it in the next few years again. And there, there is speculation that he could uh, join a Premier League club soon. So that's one to watch. Well, that is an interesting tease there. And, well, like you say, he hasn't had a chance to win it again. We've still got a guy in there who has won it in Yaya Torre. We are yet to see. <laughs> but it is getting very close to reveal time. The waiting is almost over. In which case, Peter, it is time to hand back to you, my friend. Take it away. Okay then, Ori, welcome back here. And um, you have reduced it, uh, you've cut that number down to two now. Uh, we've got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang of Borussia Dortmund and 
Gabon, as well as Yaya Toure, who captained uh, the Elephants of Ivory Coast to that memorable win at the Africa Cup of Nations in February this year. And I can tell you now that this happened, <laughs> I'm trying to prolong the suspense, a few moments ago. Let's watch this. So now it's that time when we reveal the 2015 BBC African Footballer of the Year. Congratulations, Yaya Toure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Well Thank done. You okay. Thank you. So you've won this again, the second time. How do you feel? Oh, to be honest, uh, very proud. You know what I mean? It's, it was a, it was a huge challenge for me as well. You know what I mean? Because I think I'll be involved and 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 this award for a couple of uh, couple of times now, and I think uh, always to receive uh, this dedication from the fans, I think is unbelievable. Uh, and why do you think you've won it this year again? <laughs> I think a lot of critics, you know, a lot of um, aspect, you know what I mean, because, you know, uh, been, been, uh, been, uh, been winning the African Cup of Nations, been doing what I'm doing now, been continue to doing what I have to do again, I think is always a massive achievement, you know what I mean, and I think for me, until I will continue to fight in the field, until I will continue to, to, to try to leave a trophy every year, I think I will continue to, to fight to any, any personal trophy. Yeah, only the third person ever to win this trophy twice, along with uh, JJ Okocha and yeah. uh, Kanung Wanko, yeah. who you're a very big fan of. The two big brothers are so important for me, you know, like, like for example, Wanko Kano, who I've been with, with uh, in Arsenal, I spent uh, six months in there. He was with me, always taking me to, to home and taking me to, to the training as well. We've been chatting a lot of time and he was giving me very good advice, you know, and uh, Okocha, when uh, who I met, um, I think a couple of years ago in Nigeria, a fantastic guy as well. You know, those are big legend of African football. You know what I mean? And um, being being and uh, being there back, I think for me is a massive achievement. Like you know, because when I was kid, I was always dreaming to be one day an important player. You know what I mean? And um, because I've been a lot of I've been doing a lot of sacrifices as well. And I think uh, any of the day when I when I, when I receive trophy like this, you know what I mean? Always happy and always delighted. Yeah, Arturo, once again, congratulations. You, you are much. the 2015 BBC African Footballer of the Year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So there you have it. All right, the cat is now out of the bag. The winner of this year's BBC African Footballer of the Year award is Yaya Toure. And what we didn't hear in that clip is how happy he is to receive the award because this essentially is a fans award because it's voted for by the fans and he said this is why they they play the sport this is why they're on the field almost every weekend just to make the fans happy and he really appreciates it now after i presented him with that award we we sat down and spoke about the form of his team in the champions league we spoke about the premier league and international football let's have another listen to what he had to say Finished off the group is a, is a, is, is, is mean a lot, you know what I mean? And uh, now, yeah, the, all, the, and all the group, all the team have been finished second. I think they are good, they are good team, they are big team as well. But, but I think this year we want to avoid those tough opponents. We want to go with a normal team where we can try to, to do well and go forward in this, uh, this competition. Okay, and let, let's come to the Premier League now. Manchester City currently sits in third position. Yeah. Leicester much to the surprise of many people, I don't know why, are top of the league. Do you think, come the end of the season, Leicester can win this championship? Um, to be honest with you, I think the league is very long. And as well, you know, people have to understand the fact, like, the Premier League is very hard, you know. And this top team like Arsenal, Liverpool, United, even City, even Chelsea, will be involved in a lot of competition, you know. Playing Champions League, playing FA Cup, playing the Carlin Cup. Always, all this competition is is taking a lot of energy as well. You know what I mean. And you also won a big trophy earlier in the year, the Nations Cup in February with the Elephants of Ivory Coast. Now, since you won that trophy, you've said you're taking a break from uh, the national team. Will winning this BBC African Football of the Year now spur you to go back to the Elephants? Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was talking a few months ago. I was talking with. Um, the guys in there and tell them like uh, I was thinking to have a break you know because uh, years ago I was I was having so many games in the field and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and my leg you know what I mean with the national team with um, 
the Premier League as well, the FA Cup as well, World Cup, you know, African Cup. There was so many games, you know what I mean. And um, and earlier, and earlier in the beginning of the season, I was decide to take a little bit of break just to have maybe a few days after, you know what I mean. When uh, when we have an international international team, international game to play, uh, for me it was a great idea, a good idea, a great moment as well to to step a little bit outside, you know what I mean, to breathe a little bit, you know what I mean, because. Playing too many football as well can affect your body and it can affect as well the people around you as well, you know what I mean? But not negatively, but I think for me it was a, a good step to do it, you know what I mean? And I think uh, now I think I will be back with the national team and I will be back now and I think I'm, I'm delighted and I come to help the team, yeah. So there you have it, Yaya Toure announcing uh, on the BBC that he will be going back uh, to play international football with the Elephants. You know, they refer to him in Ivory Coast as Captain Fantastic. So I'm sure a lot of jubilant fans there. And there he is. He's the winner of the BBC 2015 Africa, uh, BBC Africa F Footballer of the Year Award. Now, let me just leave you with a bit of irony, Ore, uh, because tomorrow... Uh, Manchester City will be playing right on this pitch against Swansea City. So, Yaya Toure will be coming up against Andre Ayew, another nominee for the 2015 BBC Africa Footballer of the Year Award. Should be quite tasty. <laughs> no doubt it will be. Make sure that award is on the sidelines so they know what's at stake. Peter, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Expertly done and great to hear from Yaya. As they said earlier, he is the first player to win the African Footballer of the Year award twice since JJ Kotcher in 2004. In fact, he's only the third ever after Nwankwe Kanu as well. Uh, so, Patrick, he is our man. 2015 champion, a deserving winner? Yes, I would say so. With uh, winning the African Cup of Nations, uh, doing very well in the league with Manchester City. Not only in the league, playing at the highest level in the Champions League and being the main man in his team and doing the job uh, that was expected from him, I think he deserved it, yes. John, it, it says how much he stepped up for his country this year, that he didn't win a domestic trophy at all for Manchester City, mm. but that the people who have voted, how much it's resonated, he dragged that Elephants team all the way to the final and won. It was a huge moment because they'd had so many disappointments, Ivory Coast, with their golden generation, the likes of the Torre brothers and Didier Drogba. So to finally win that Africa Cup of Nations for the first time since 1992, was a big moment. I think it caught the imagination of the public to see Yaya Toure lifting the trophy. And you have to say, he is the standout player in African football. He's, he was the only African player nominated in the shortlist for Ballon d'Or, the only African player on the shortlist for the FIFA Pro Team of the Year as well. Consistently at the top of his game, people write him off, but he always comes back stronger. I mean, Peter said that he, he's known in the Ivory Coast as Captain Fantastic. How important was he in dragging that team through to win? Absolutely crucial. Scored uh, some crucial goals, particularly in the semi-final. I thought his performance stood out. And holding their nerve in the penalty shootout as well. I think, you know, Patrick, I don't know if you agree, but being the captain, he must have really uh, gelled that team together in that, that crucial moment, the penalty shootout, when it was a really nerve-wracking moment. I think he, he was absolutely crucial. They really needed him at that moment. Yeah. This year, a, a different win from when he won it back in 2013, Patrick, when, you know, that year he went on to score 20-odd goals for Manchester mm. City as they won the Premier League title. So uh, he, he obviously prioritised this year the African side of things, but still scoring goals for Manchester City, he, he's sort of done it on both sides, hasn't he? 